We are now coming to the Q Q and A session. Before we begin, the dental reminder again to type your name, the company or media you are representing, and to which speaker you are directing your questions to in a chat room. Uh, and we will read out your questions. Now we ha already have one question. This is a question from Digital News Asia. Uh, journalist is K Y. First question: What would you? Uh, the question is directed to Wing. Yeah. What would you identify are the gaps in Malaysia Kuala Lumpur when it comes to interconnectivity that is keeping it from ranking higher? Second question: What would you say are its biggest strengths? Wing. Thank you for the thank you for the kind question, JY. Um, first of all, um, I, I I'm not sure what is um, what kind of a ranking that you're referring to, um, but the um, uh, if you are if you're talking about the, the connectivity gap, um, I, I I believe um, the um, if the based on based on John's uh, um, um, research yeah, which. Uh, take into consideration the number of undersea cable terminating to the uh, to the locations. Yes, uh, Kuala Lumpur because it's an inland uh, uh, is an inland port, so um, it has uh, a much lesser number of undersea cable connect to it. But in terms of the um, uh, in, in in term of the number of uh, um, the uh, the content players connecting in uh, Kuala Lumpur. I would say most of the large OTT players, they already have a presence in Kuala Lumpur. Um, so those are what we call the tier one OTT players. Um, and then there are also a tier two OTT players who are accumulating in Singapore. Um, so currently using DKIX distributed IX models, we are able to help this group of uh, OTT players to distribute content from the connectivity hub in Singapore across our um, peering fabrics to countries in the regions. Um, so um, I hope that answer your questions there. Yeah, uh, we have here live uh, John, who is the author of the white paper with us uh, as well. Hi, good morning, John. It's actually 4.35 a.m. in East Coast in United States. John, would yes, you like I to enjoy. share some of your thoughts uh, from the question? I'm sorry? Would you like to share some of your thoughts regarding the question that was directed uh, to Wing earlier? Sure. Um, yeah, it's a terrific question. And uh, I, I think, you know, when we look at where, where Malaysia currently uh, sits relative to Singapore and other locations, um, I, th I think Wing touched on the major points. You have, um, significant subsea connectivity coming in, connecting Malaysia to Singapore. That's very, that's incredibly helpful and in making sure that the underlying fabric is there to create the platforms locally that you need. Uh, you have already tremendous uh, IX activity happening in the market. So that shows tremendous potential. Um, you have the major cloud providers, as Wang said, already present in the market. Um, one of the things that strikes me when we talk about the, the cloud providers in particular, they're, they're a really strong bellwether for, for what's happening in a, in a market because they're not moving speculatively. They're moving based on real immediate demand within a marketplace. So the fact that they are there now shows immediate demand within that market. Um, at the same time, you know, if we talk about why, you know, why it doesn't rank higher than it does perhaps, um, which is a relative thing. Singapore is an undisputed hub. Um, they, we, we don't see full-blown cloud regions from these providers yet. And that could, that could still happen in the, in the near future, who knows? Um, but that's one area where we haven't seen full-blown investment in uh, proprietary data centers for these operators to provide applications locally. Um, and um, we, we don't have a tremendous variety of IXs yet. So we have, we have a few that, are, that uh, are showing great signs of activity, but we, um, we don't have the robust uh, ecosystem of multiple IXs to enable uh, peering across multiple platforms. And when you want to attract more international activity, you wanna have a lot of options, um, both in terms of IX and carriers locally. 
So I, that, that's what I'd say to that one. Thank you, John. Uh, next, we have three questions from Focus Malaysia. The first question, how do you think the white people will benefit the interconnection markets in the current global conditions? Second question, with Malaysia striving to become a sub-regional interconnectivity hub for Southeast Asia, which countries would be some of the competitors and why? Question number three, tell me about some examples of Malaysia's over-dependence of network operators on Singapore. Perhaps the first question, uh, Ivo, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I want to answer this uh, with a, a very um, interesting um, example and put it in that way. If it comes to competition, it's, it's quite hard to say, yes, there will be a lot of competition because we learned today that all these markets we have mentioned, Malaysia including, they deserve localization on all these services. So having services in Singapore is not enough anymore. And John gave uh, very uh, good reasons for why we need further distribution across the region. Having uh, a lot of exchanges uh, in Jakarta doesn't do the trick for Malaysia and Thailand and vice versa. So we need this strong ecosystem building on site in all these markets. So therefore competition is probably in a sense, given that who will be one of the first adopters outside of Singapore, and we do see Malaysia on a very good path for two reasons, um, concentration of sea cables and proximity on the terrestrial way to Singapore, of course, and the second one, a fast growing economy. And this is when I want to touch on having the infrastructure in place for interconnection, we do, um, um, built there next to peering also the cloud exchange will help um, domestically um, to create a lot of advantages for the businesses and, and for the for the entire digital economy just just let me give you one one hint there a lot of people they ask themselves how we can mitigate the risk of cloud concentration and this is exactly what the answer is just distribute the sources of your cloud usage physically and logically use different cloud service providers, use multiple physical locations to get access to. This is what a distributed exchange, cloud exchange stays for. Right, thank you, Ivo. John, would you like to add on anything? Sure, I'll just add one thing real quickly because I think Ivo touched on the major points uh, from the technological perspective, especially. Uh, what really struck me in going through this study though was looking at the, the, the geopolitical situation that we're in right now. Um, and, and that I think necessitates that we ask some hard questions about what over-dependence on single locations to concentrate our network assets. Um, you know, Singapore is a, a stable economy. It's a, it's a great market, but um, we see so many network operators, you know, wondering about the cost of, of deploying there. And, and, and now we have policy issues related to data center development that are um, hamstringing development. Um, but then, you know, you look anywhere else in the region at existing major hubs in, you know, Hong Kong, just outside the region, there, there are tremendous problems there. So we have to ask, you know, we, we have to go deeper within Southeast Asia and, the, and people are wrestling with this exact question around the world. They have to go deeper within subregions rather than looking for alternative traditional hubs. Right, thank you, John. Well, perhaps we would be able to answer uh, the second question. With Malaysia striving to become a sub-regional interconnectivity hub for Southeast Asia, which countries do you think would some of the competitors and why? Uh, yeah, thanks for the questions. Um, now, um, when it comes to the decisions on um, where a content providers will place the, its content in the regions, um, um, the, there are actually many, um, um, many criteria that uh, they, would, they would likely to consider. Number one, um, the, uh, the stability of the country, the stability of the government, the consistency of the decision-making process of the government. So um, in, in this respect, Malaysia probably have a little bit of an advantage there. Um, however, this is not the only, uh, 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 only conditions, the only criteria that OTT players 
uh, 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 used to uh, evaluate the suitability of the of the countries. Um, they also look into, uh, the, for example, the size of the economy, the populations. You know, the is the how liberated is the telco industry. Um, so there will I I I I doubt they will be making decision based on any single. Uh, criteria here. It, it will be a combination of all these criteria to formulate uh, decisions for them to enter to the countries and place content in that, in, in that countries. Now, Malaysia's, we definitely have the strength in terms of our proximity to the hubs and the, and the varieties of uh, connectivities that we have in the countries. Um, however, our, our population size is not as big as some of the neighboring countries. So players, uh, when they decide where to place the content, they will they will likely to think that you know Malaysia is a good uh, you know transport uh, a hub, um, but it may not be you know but the best location to place the you know the content. Now this may this may this may change over time as more cloud players come into the regions because cloud players. Um, they they focus a lot on localizing the content. For example, some of the cloud players they may have a significant amount of business from Malaysia. They may decide, okay, it's justified for them to build a data centers in Malaysia and put the content locally to serve Malaysia customers. So for so many of these decisions are actually very uh, from one place, but. Um, but the uh, but overall, I would say Malaysia we stand a very good chance uh, in competing in the regions because of our proximities to the hub and because of the ease of connectivities uh, uh, within um, within the countries. I hope that answered the questions. Yeah. Um, the next question, I think, focus Malaysia will also want to know uh, if there are any examples of Malaysia's over dependence of network operators on Singapore. Uh, any particular uh, 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 members of your client that have faced uh, over dependence of network operators in Singapore? Um, let, I think I can answer that. Um, I think the um, I, to be to be quite honest, uh, the, 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 connect, the the way connectivity works in the internet uh, world, yeah, um, there are there 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 are two there are actually. Uh, Two, two types of players. You have the content providers, you have the eyeballs carriers. So both of them, they will have to uh, decide, you know, who will cover the cost to, you know, the bridge the content to the eyeballs. So in terms of, um, you know, Malaysia's, uh, the example of our Malaysia's over dependencies on the network operators in Singapore. So I think over time, this has been seriously, um, um, you know, the, the, the Malaysian operators have developed uh, a lot of strategies to deal with the situations. So over time they had, you know, the, the dependencies on, the, on, on Singapore is, is, is becoming lesser over time. And of course, you know, with, with the DKIX Distributor IX, you know, we, we are aiming to, you know, to, to bring in the, the, the shortest, uh, the lowest latencies connectivities to the, um, you know, between the eyeballs and the, and the content players. So again, with us, with, with the DKIX distributed IX, we will, we will be able to, we are a useful tools for all the operators and OTT players when they, when they, when, when they are, um, when they are, um, when, when they are working on, you know, um, the way to lower the latency to the, um, to the eyeballs. So we are actually, we are a very useful tools to all network players in the, in the regions. Right, uh, thank you Wing. There are two more questions here. Uh, first question, what are some of the most important criteria that businesses should set in choosing a data center partner? And what sets DKIX apart from the other major industry players? Uh, for this, perhaps uh, Ivo, would you like to share your thoughts? Yes, thank you. Um, we at Jackie's believe entirely in the neutrality, carrier neutrality of a data center. This is one of the most important uh, uh, criteria. Um, why? Um, because of the options, uh, options of avoiding uh, vendor locking, options of, uh, for connectivity 
and also the competitive landscape in those data centers having uh, variable solutions for connectivity on the terrestrial, but also on the subsea side, um, extending uh, their um, uh, reach uh, to, to different target groups uh, uh, is exactly what uh, different network operators um, need. Of course, the, the level of security and the level of, of, of professional way of providing the data center operations is also extremely important. DICX differs from other um, operators on the market based on this neutrality. DICX is, is an example of the largest neutral interconnection ecosystem on the planet. That, as I said earlier today, neutral defined as data center and carrier neutral. We believe this is the right approach for the future. Why? Because we will see a lot of network operators requesting the demand for um, multi-homed interconnections. That means uh, accessibility of the platform in different uh, uh, data centers, uh, which allows them to create better redundancy and resilience on the interconnection. So having internet exchange platforms owned by a data center and being operated in, in this data center only does not provide disadvantages. So in a nutshell, being extremely data center neutral and placed in as many as possible data centers across the region is one of the um, uh, greatest advantages we believe can provide to the community. Right, thank you, Ivo. The next question, how does an increased co-location capacity help companies to meet business demands? John, would you like to take this up? Sure. I, so I think the biggest thing is that when you increase your co-location capacity, it's going hand in hand with increased network capacity. So I think there's a pretty, uh, th th there's a basic answer to this. And I, I don't know if the other guys will have a more detailed answer perhaps than I could provide. But, um, you know, at Telegeography, we track the network and network and co-location development hand in hand. And there's a very important reason for that. These, these two things are so interlinked. Uh, so when, wherever you're increasing your co-location demand, you're able to increase your network services to provide more backup, more applications, more cloud to your customers. Right. Thank you, John. I think we have one last question here. Um, I is, think, uh, if you it, want to I add something? Like, a, yeah, yeah, I would just Evo want to add. So, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, just, just a, a couple of seconds. Uh, adding to what John said, what we see as a trend, and this drives data center um, capacity increase, is on the enterprise side. We see this, that enterprises uh, start preferring to outsource their on-premise, own data center services, like, like bring their um, 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 setups, the, literally their setups, their multi-cloud sensors into professionally managed and run data center environments. Um, and this is a huge trend which will increase further dramatically the demand for professional data center investments and build. You imagine it's about the entire industry. We are talking about everybody who is doing business today. The bigger ones started already. They, they will be followed by mid-sized companies and so forth and so on. This creates a huge data center demand. Thanks, Ivo. Uh, Wing, would you like to add before I move on to the last question? Yeah, I think I think the, the, the other aspect is also that, you know, data centers uh, nowadays um, with the hyperscaler coming in, um, you know, the, the, the limiting factors is no longer the space itself. It's more like, you know, the power, uh, you know, the availability of the power is, uh, is a very important criteria. Um, so I think the, um, with, the with, with Singapore's, um, you know, um, Putting a lead on additional new build of data centers, I think the um, um, the, the the increase of, of the you, you know the availability of collocation space in Malaysia it should be a welcome news to um, to to some of the regional players who are looking at placing content in the regions. Um, however, I think um, the um, that that will not be the only uh, answers to the um, um, you know to the questions. I think. The, um, uh, the, the the combination of connectivity costs, you know, the availability of powers, all those will come into the pictures um, when when um, when an OTT players uh, decide where to um, where to place the content. Right, Wing. Uh, thanks. 
uh, one last question. What is the impact of a digital hub on the local, regional, or national economy? Perhaps is they are looking at some cost effectiveness or return on investment? Let me take that. Yeah, uh, please, I can, please I can go ahead. Go ahead. That. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll take the first half. You, you take yeah. the second half. Right. Okay, now um, I think the, um, well, what, 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 what I can say is uh, we, we could quote one example on, um, on, on what, what this uh, digital hub can, can bring to the industry. What I can say, what, what I can, I can quote, quote one example of, of, of an industry, for example, uh, the banking industries. Um, the banking industries, they're looking at uh, you know, um, uh, ways to reduce the latency because um, the latencies, every time when someone um, uh, uh, transact uh, a credit card, for example, um, the faster that they can turn around on that credit card transactions, uh, the, uh, the easier it is for the bank to be able to secure uh, that business. So to them, every millisecond will mean you know, a, a, a couple of millions business potential for them. So um, if, you, if you're looking at you know, this kind of uh, applications where, which, which is very latency sensitive, um, you know, the platform that we are building will means you know, uh, we'll have a tremendous value to them because by connecting to our platform, they could reduce the latency you know, to reach to the, uh, to, to the end users, the transactions, they can reduce 50% of the transaction time. That will bring in tremendous amount of business to them. So, uh, this is just one example of how, you know, the industry can make use of, you know, our digital hub uh, in order to, um, you know, in order to transform their industry to be more competitive when, uh, when they are trying to compete with some of the foreign players, for example. Um, so, you, do you have any anything to add? Yeah, more in a, probably a, a further general perspective. If we look at existing hubs so like like uh, Frankfurt, New York, Tokyo, Singapore is already established one in in this part of the region. We see that a digital hub in general, and this will happen in all these countries and markets we may, uh, mentioned, like Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. A digital hub today is a guarantee for concentration of business, is a guarantee for investments, is a guarantee for creating jobs, is a guarantee for economic growth because digitalization is now everywhere with every single business and the digital hub is just a foundation for further growth on the entire value chain. So it's a must have it. And uh, we as an in-connection platform delivering one element of the business and digital hub connection will provide our contribution to. Right, thank you, Ivo. Now, members of the media, uh, if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one interview session with either of the speakers, we can put you into separate rooms. So do let us know if you would like to have one-on-one -on -one session with John or with Wing or with Ivo. Ivo will be in room one, John will be in room two, and John will be in room three. Right, uh, members of the media? Would you want to have a one-on-one -on -one interview session? Just type in the chat room if you indeed want to speak to them individually, right? As for the rest of the uh, guests who are here, uh, that's the end of our session, all right? And uh, thank you again for your participation to DKIC's White Paper Launch Virtual Conference. If you have further inquiries Thank you so much for coming. on the interconnectivity services, kindly contact Catherine for if you are a customer or a potential customer, or Rayan for the media. All right, you may find both the contact details in the chat room. Thanks again, everyone. We hope to see you again in the Kicks events in the near future. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for coming. John. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Thank you. Thank you. No, stay just healthy. stay on for a while because we just need to sure we just need to check if the media would like to have one on one with you. Just stay on for a while, yeah. Sure. Members of the media, anyone who want to do a one on one?
Um, hold on a sec, yeah. Just checking the chat room. John, is that your background? Is that your real background? This is my real background. Yeah, I'm not using a skin. This is uh, this is our. Uh, let's see which year this is. This is our 2013 submarine cable map. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. we, we have we have we have some guests asking whether we can uh, whether they can buy your, uh, your your undersea cable map. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, maybe I, next you know, time. I, yeah. Maybe next time I, we, we can do a T-Kicks version of that. Oh yeah, own, they, they, we would love to do that. <laughs> but, uh, this is a very very good service telegeography provides. We we uh, I'm is. a big fan of collecting all these maps, guys. You do you have produced <laughs> with uh, different operators. Using the chance here, uh, uh, having you so early online, want to thank you for being uh, uh, so so supportive, John. Waking up so early is is is, is just one thing, but providing this amazing summary on the entire white paper um, has been terrific. Thank you so much. Oh. This is, I received a lot of very, very positive comments and, and uh, I believe this is a foundation for um, a lot of things we can do together in the future. Wonderful, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Evo. Absolutely. I, I mean, this has been a pleasure for me. Thank you, Wang, too. Um, yeah, they, thank you very they, much, they, John. I think what, I, what I've loved about it is just how much this, the, the work that you guys do, the, the perspective that you wanna bring out, it jives very well with what we're seeing and it's it's a great exercise for me to go through in doing this kind of research so it's my pleasure yeah more to come fantastic thank you thank very you. much right fantastic yep. uh more gentlemen uh all the media state thank you they have uh the information already and there isn't a need for any one-on-one -on -one interviews so thanks again gentlemen right okay you you have much. a good okay. one guys thank have you very a good much. day and Cheers. good morning have a thank good you, christmas john, john. Okay. and so, to, you. so to you and both Bye. Have a good breakfast. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Thank Bye. Have a good dinner. Bye. Bye.